friends and members of the Lynn Hall Library, it's good to be in your company. Can I thank, first of all, um, our great friend Barry for that beautiful, beautiful music. It was absolutely wonderful. And also, can I thank is it eight or nine people who lugged that piano up here <laughs> so that we could have the joy of hearing it here. Well done, it's absolutely wonderful, beautiful. Thank you. And thank you so much all for being here um, on a day that's very special for Mark and I because this is my last uh, time to stand in my native city um, as President of Ireland. And um, so it's a very, very beautiful and very special day for us. But particularly special that we would come to the Hall Library. She said we were honouring and are honouring a, a long promise, a long term promise. One of the reasons why I wanted to come to the Linen Hall Library and to say thank you to the Linen Hall Library is very, very long time ago. I've always loved libraries since I was a youngster. I've loved books, I've loved, I've loved libraries. Many of us here, we love the feel of a library. But growing up in Belfast, as some of you will know, it was a place of strong opinions. If we were a proselytizing people, can I put it that way? There was always somebody who wanted to tell you why you should hold their opinion, their view, why their edited view of history should be yours. And even in the books that we read in school, well, the analysis was already there. We were expected to read, to analyze what had been given to us. And then I went to study law, and as a, as a famous son of the city, um, once remarked, uh, subsequently to become a, a don at Trinity College, um, conscious I am that a few of my former students are here listening, um, but uh, he once said that, um, that it was no accident that uh, the founding faculties of the Queen's University of Belfast, which I love as an institution, but it was no accident that the founding faculties were medicine, I think he said agriculture and law, in none of which he said you would ever encounter an idea. <laughs> Uh, can't speak for medicine or agriculture, but law, well, the odd idea managed to creep in somehow. But it is true to say that even, I suppose, at university, um, we studied other people's opinions and we compared and contrasted other people's opinions. But something about this place, I discovered this place when um, I discovered the Linen Hall Library um, before I went to university um, and during my years in university came here reasonably regularly. And one of its great gifts, I should say to you, is to come in here and find raw material, raw material, just left to your own devices. Material of all sorts and types, from all politics and persuasions, all backgrounds and all kinds of disciplines. Raw material, respectfully gathered, not edited, just respectfully gathered and left for the reader to come in, enjoy, indulge, and go away with the imprint of your own analysis. And there's something very special about this library, something extraordinary about this library, that introduces the person who comes here, for the first time in many cases, to the idea that your own analysis, your own views might be worth something. They might actually be worth something. And they are worth developing because this place has had a mission to develop the curious mind, to open the mind and to develop the curious mind from the very beginning. And that is exactly what it has done. Such a refuge, such a shelter from the storm so often going out on the, on the streets out there. This place has, I think, for many people had and held very special memories. Memories that are not just memories, but memories that actually are leavens. Um, in your heart, in your soul, and in your mind. So I wanted to come back to say thank you to the people who, for all these almost now 225 years, have kept faith with this unique library through all sorts of storms and all sorts of difficulties. And no doubt there will be storms and difficulties ahead because to, to maintain um, an independent library of this type in these times is really in many ways running against the tide but it has always stood as a sign of contradiction. That's always been its role, to be a sign and a place of contradiction, where you could come in out of the maelstrom and find your feet inside a space, an intellectual space, that was respectful of all views, and in particular, respectful of you as you sought to find your own feet in the world of opinions. So can I thank you for that? I think it's a wonderful mission that you have had here, 
the way in which you have created so many source bases, not just resource, but source bases for information about who we are and what we are, what our culture is, what it developed from, how it developed, simply sources that we would not have at all, only for the existence of this place and the passion of the people who held it together, who glued it together over all those generations and all those many changing faces of Belfast and of Ireland that it has lived through. So can I thank you, um, all those, what they call the worthy artisans of Belfast who um, established this place and all the worthy people, the good people since, who have given it life, given it breath, who have opened it up in so many ways for events like this, and I remember coming to so many other events, poetry readings and all sorts of things that happened here. An intellectual space, encouraging the intellectual life in a city that really needed that encouragement, needed that intellectual life, and needed people who were prepared to leave here to walk out on the street and be themselves signs of contradiction in a world that would have pushed us all towards a kind of um, a unanimity of voice, or perhaps two sets of unanimous voices, but shouting different things at each other. That, that world was not the world of the Linen Hall Library. The other thing that I learned here, and I think is a very important lesson, was about time and timelines. And this is one of the great gifts of the library here also, is to realise, first of all, our place in the world of the the world that we inhabit, that we just are inserted in for whatever number of years are available to us, and to use that time well, to use that time as the people whose works are respected so much here, use their time well to make their imprint in their time, but to take the long-term view as those who built this place did. They didn't build it for five years or for 10 or for just the times they lived in. They built it for generations to come. And I want to thank you again for that, that you also, in your turn, no matter how difficult it is financially, you go out there um, and you make this place available from generation to generation. Can I thank you for all of you for being here um, as on this lovely day for Martin and I to return and to honour a promise. Not just a promise that was simply made, but a promise that absolutely had to be kept because I owe this place. A debt that couldn't be ever repaid, as so many of us do. Can I thank you for that, Gormila Martin?